Everyone dreams of living the American dream, a spacious house, a yard where kids and dogs can play, and a project that makes the neighborhood stop and stare. Evan Bryant had all that, a home and a yard, and he decided it was time for something big. So he grabbed a shovel and started digging. At first, his neighbors thought he'd lost it, but it didn't take long for them to see that Evan had a vision for his backyard like nothing they'd ever imagined. What he did with that massive hole is nothing short of extraordinary, one of the boldest projects you'll ever see. If I saw one of my neighbors digging a huge hole, I'd probably assume they were putting in a swimming pool. But Evan had something else in mind. After laying some gravel, he didn't fill it with water. Instead, he brought in a 20-foot shipping container, which definitely isn't what you'd expect for a pool. Before he even started digging, Evan bought the shipping container online. Turns out, you can find these massive containers for surprisingly cheap. The first thing he did after getting it was make sure it was sealed tight. He closed off the big double doors and put a regular swinging door on the other side, making sure there were no leaks or gaps. By now, you probably have an idea of what Evan was planning, but why did he need extra space above the container? Now that it's in the ground, the real project is about to start. You might think you know where this is going, but the end result will definitely inspire you to take on your own DIY project. A sump pump is a piece of plumbing equipment that helps drain water out of enclosed spaces. This is a crucial component when you're putting anything below ground, as it helps keep your bunker above the waterline. You generally find these in basements. The last thing you want for your underground bunker is for a flood to ruin anything you put inside it. But what exactly was even planning to put inside his bunker? The answer to that question is coming up in just a bit. Naturally, when you're making an underground bunker, you need a way to get inside. Evan did the logical thing and laid down a set of concrete steps, making sure the top stair was at the same level as the top of his bunker. Evan was very smart to install these two I-beams to ensure his bunker was as stable as possible. You probably wouldn't think that a giant 20-foot container could move much, but the ground can easily shift and leave his bunker unbalanced. It's kind of hard to think about a roof being underground, but that's precisely the plan here. Evan laid down heavy sheets of metal across the framework, stable enough to support a person's weight and even a dog. Obviously, this is just the first step in laying down the roof, but it gives us a great idea of what he had planned. Now that the exterior was taking shape, we still need to know what's going on with the inside of the bunker. What's he planning to put in there, anyway? We already mentioned how the staircase would be the only way in and out of the bunker, but Egan wasn't satisfied with just a regular entrance. Once he had the roof set up and secure, he got to work on creating a grand entrance for his bunker. He left an opening in the roof and set up some rebar to help keep everything supported. Obviously, Evan took safety very seriously when putting his bunker together. Not only did he ensure that his bunker was safe and secure underground, but he also made sure everything was up to code. As crucial as it was to install a sump pump to filter water through the soil, the most important addition was the air vents. You wouldn't last long underground without access to fresh air, so Evan made sure to install two 12-inch air vents at the front and back of the bunker. The ground can shift, especially in the winter when it freezes, so Evan encased his bunker in concrete along the sides and on top of the roof. Now that he has his bunker set up to protect against anything life might throw at it, he can focus on the interior of the project. As the only part of the bunker exposed to the elements, more protection is always better. That door is definitely going to take a beating over the years, so any way you can block out things like bad weather or animals is a good idea. Now that he's finally done with the outside, we can take a trip down those steps to see what the inside is like. As we've said time and time again, safety is key when doing a project like this. The last thing you want is for your bunker to be sitting in the middle of your yard in a dirt pit. So, Evan made sure to use some high-quality soil to fill the space surrounding the entrance. That means he can go back once everything is done and plant some plants to help it blend in with the rest of his lawn. You can see that the finished product won't even make it look like there was ever a giant hole there in the first place, and I doubt anyone would expect to find a bunker underneath. Before we begin, make sure you smash that like button, subscribe to our channel, and click the notification bell for more amazing videos. I don't know what I was expecting, but I definitely didn't expect this cellar to be filled with wine. However, it makes a lot of sense. Wine, and other liquor like bourbon, is best stored underground. And the cool atmosphere should help it last for generations to come. But is that the only reason he built this bunker, or does he have even bigger plans for this cellar? The great thing about a container like this is that it can meet so many different needs. As you can see from the back, there's plenty of room for storage. While Evan plans to fill it with wine, it could also be a great place to store your Christmas decorations or non-perishable foods in case of an emergency. Imagine something bad, like a natural disaster happens. Now Avon has a shelter built to meet his needs, whether he needs to hunker down for a few hours or even a few days. The best part is that it doesn't take up any space in his yard because it's all underground. One of the most interesting aspects of Evan's project is that, with a little bit of money and some resources, anyone could do this themselves. Instead of keeping his secret bunker to himself, Evan decided to share his masterpiece with the world, right down to how he created it. 
He'd even shared the specs of his container, noting the aspects that builders will need to pay close attention to if they attempt to recreate it themselves. Evan provided some tips he learned along the way. While Avon was finished with his bunker, he shared a couple of recommendations for people who might also try to install their own bunkers. One of his suggestions was to add handrails down the stairs for safety. Frankly, that's a great idea, especially if you live somewhere cold where the stairs could get icy and slippery. He also mentioned that it might be wise to build a small overhang over the entrance. Again, this would be helpful in areas where the elements could make the stairs icy or even fill the hole with rainwater. Additionally, it wouldn't be a bad idea to keep critters out of the walkway. Although we're not currently fighting a war on American soil, many people still have bunkers in their homes. During the Cold War, the federal government recommended that people create fallout shelters and bunkers in their basements or buried in their backyards. They recommended using as much concrete as possible and a strong roof. In the 1960s, shelters weren't designed very well. But now people have access to more information and resources. So how many Americans have bunkers today? In early 2017, container and bunker building companies saw their business greatly increase. Americans felt compelled to prepare for a wartime situation as foreign relations tensions and uncertainty about the future grew. Clyde Scott, who owns Rising S Bunkers, a bunker building company based in Texas, said business was at an all-time high from 2016 to 2017. This sales increased by an incredible 400%, according to The Independent, growing into a $10 million a year business. In the end, all of Evan's hard work had a cost, but it was more affordable than you might think. Evan spent $122,500 on his DIY bunker which is actually quite reasonable. He did most of the work himself and used his own tractor for tasks like digging and filling in the soil, which probably saved him a lot of money. Building a bunker this way is a creative option, but some people are turning to companies that build them for you. Paul Seyfried, the president of Utah Shelter Systems, said his bunker business has been really busy lately. While he has customers all over the US, most orders come from New York, California, and Texas. He mentioned that their smallest shelters start at $50,000 and the larger ones, which are 12 feet by 50 feet, can cost around $100,000. Most people are building these shelters to protect their families from things like electromagnetic pulses and radiation. Vivas X Point, an old army base in South Dakota that hasn't been used since 1967, is also being repurposed for civilians. There are 575 concrete bunkers available for lease for $222,500 for 99 years, plus $1,000 a year. The bunkers are large between 1,590 and 2,120 square feet but they don't have plumbing, electricity, or air filtration, so they need some upgrades. Atlas Survival Shelters, based in California, saw a big spike in sales, selling 30 shelters in just three days after Donald Trump became president, compared to 10 sales in all of 2011. Interest in bunkers has clearly grown. Their bunkers are designed to feel more like a home, so if you want to take shelter without feeling like you're in an unfinished basement, they're a good choice. Many of their customers are baby boomers who remember the nuclear missile threats from their younger years and want to be prepared.